After nearly 20 years of planning, Norway's hotly anticipated new National Museum opened in Oslo this summer, promising to help reshape the art scene of Northern Europe. It combines the collections of four museums, creating a mammoth of art and culture, with room for 100,000 works, including some of the most famous pieces in the world. We traveled there for its opening week and the start of a new chapter in Scandinavia. For more than 100 years, this spot on the Oslo Harbor, where the city meets the fjord, marked the nexus of travel to Western Norway. Now there's hope to make this site of a former train station a destination once again. Inside the imposing walls of the National Museum, a vast and ambitious effort to reshape the identity of Scandinavian art, directed by Karen Hinsbo. When you open a national museum, you're also telling the story of a nation. Yes, we want to tell the story about Norway, but also to tell the story about Norway in the world. Now one of Europe's largest art museums, it merges four of Norway's most expansive collections, including the National Gallery. It wasn't easy. The project cost more than $600 million and took almost 20 years before finally opening this June. How rare is it to build a world-class museum? I think it's quite rare to get this opportunity in the 21st century. Yes. And of course, we have been uh, thinking a lot about that. What is a national museum today? What is uh, an ad identity? Is it even relevant to discuss a, a national identity today? But these are important questions and we can raise them. It wouldn't be a national museum without Norway's most famous artist, Edvard Munch. The scream, his painting of an agonized man, mesmerizing visitors, then and now. Would you say that that's one of the, the most well-known pieces of of art here? Yes, of course. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it has its own emoji. <laughs> you, you can't really top that. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. I've never thought of it like that. <laughs> the modern day interpretation perfectly encapsulating life's unexpected moments. And one of the only originals lives here. This room is very special to the museum. Yes, that's true. It's the home of the main, um, the main home of Edvard Munch's paintings in our collection. Maya Bregguling curates the Munch collection and says the room's darkness helps preserve the scream's delicate canvas, cardboard. Munch wanted to have a very matte surface because that was part of the message to the viewer. And in the sky, you can read with very tiny pencil letters, must have been painted by a madman. A hidden message. A hidden message. And the painting has plenty of its own stories to tell, especially after being taken in 1994. The scream by Edvard Munch has been stolen from Norway's National Gallery. The thieves seen in this security footage climbed in through a window, leaving behind a note. Thanks for the poor security. It was recovered about three months later, returned to its place as a centerpiece of Norwegian art history. What did it mean? to have this painting stolen? Well, it was devastating. Of course, this was one of the main attractions and main works in our collection. And of course, it's really important to the understanding of Edvard Munch's uh, art. The museum's collection also includes royal fashion, allowing visitors to get up close to opulent and ornate dresses, once donned by Norwegian queens. Making modern history, Norwegian Peter Dundas, who crafted these designs for international luminaries, including Michelle Obama and Kim Kardashian. The eye-catching appeal of Nordic taste isn't limited to fashion. Denise Hogstrummer is the museum's senior curator of design. So many of us in the world have been influenced by Scandinavian design and don't even realize that. Yes, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, it's so ubiquitous. <laughs> uh, it's everywhere. Known for its minimal and clean composition, the confident aesthetic combines functionality with artistry. The intentional design seen in everyday items, from early cell phones to robotic vacuums. 
they will recognize many, many objects here. And I've noticed that going around and observing <laughs> our first visitors. And they talk about exhibits that they recognize and they get all excited <laughs> about, you know, seeing them in, in these cases. The response, especially rewarding after the massive effort to safely transport hundreds of thousands of objects in the move. But the painstaking process of cataloging each item to ensure nothing was lost also presented an unexpected gain. It gave us a whole new perspective and knowledge of the collection. We have 400,000 uh, objects in total. You don't go work with them every day, but when you certainly need to move them, you need to work with them in a different way. Inside the museum's photography studio, curators are able to see works in a new light, using infrared cameras to dive underneath layers of paint. When you talk about the ability to not only revisit, but revisit with the best state-of-the-art technology, what do you discover? We discovered this uh, sketch underneath uh, uh, Edward Munch's uh, Madonna. Uh, her arm was originally painted in a whole different way. It's known as one of Monk's most controversial works, but his sketch of Madonna underneath the final painting reveals a more traditional and conservative pose as he experimented with ideas. And though the finished piece now hangs in this gallery, it's far from static. Its enduring legacy, a gift for future generations, much like the museum itself as it welcomes its visitors. What have you been hearing? People uh, may not like all the art or the solutions, but they have a really great experience being here. And uh, that is also the most important thing. We are not here to um, provide consensus. We are here to provide a great space for different opinions. And there are a lot of different opinions, especially when you create what is a national museum. What do you do to put something in it? It can be subjective. And so that's part about eliciting that conversation to begin with. I love that ability to look under the painting and yeah. find what was the sketch originally. Yeah, starting with Scream is not a bad idea, yeah. which I had no idea was painted on, on cardboard. cardboard. Or the emoji for me. <laughs>